Oh, Sasha, hey there, how's it going? I bet that you're looking pretty pregnant right about now, aren't you? Hey there, Donna. Yes, I'd say I've gotten pretty big now. The baby bump is certainly noticeable. For anyone with eyes, really. <laughs> well, I heard that you were really nervous about how you were going to raise the child. I even heard that you were asking your mother-in-law for help or any tips that she might be able to give you. That is very true. I did go to her and ask for some help with this. I mean, this is my first child, after all. So I just feel like there are going to be so many things that I don't know. But thankfully, Linda listened to all of my worries and was very good at calming me down and making me feel better. I see. Well, yeah, I guess that she would be pretty good at that, considering the fact that she's been a mom for decades now. But, you know, you could have also come to me and asked for advice, too. I'm also a mom, don't you know? Besides, we're basically like sisters, so there's no need to feel embarrassed about asking for a little friend's advice, right? I mean, after all, I'm your brother-in-law's wife. If we're basically family, don't you think? I really do appreciate you offering to help me when I'm nervous, Donna. But I actually really just happened to be visiting Linda when I asked her. It wasn't like I went out of my way to ask her advice specifically. Wait, hold on a second. Just how often are you meeting with Linda? Well, I guess pretty often now that I think about it. I mean, you know how easily sick I get, right? Well, she actually comes over to my house pretty often to help me keep the place clean and running. And so I guess we do actually end up spending quite a bit of time together like that and just talk about whatever is on our minds. Is she coming over to your place because of how often you get sick? Doesn't that make you worried about your pregnancy at all? I mean, are you worried that your condition might affect the baby or something? Yes, of course I'm nervous about that. I get so worried about my baby. So, I have done all I can to follow the doctor's advice as close as possible in trying to do this the right way. Wow, I see. I guess I never knew just how fragile your body really was. I mean, you know that I've had five kids by this point, right? I never had any problems with a single one of them. They all just popped right out. See, I really think that's incredible if I can be honest with you. I mean, not only did you go through pregnancy five times, but now that your husband has been living away for business, you're raising all five of them by yourself. I really just have to come out and tell you that I have nothing but respect for being able to do all of that. I'm really not sure if I could handle it. I guess you are right about that. I am pretty great now that I think about it, aren't I? Besides, you know all the news about people having less kids, right? I just figure that I'm doing my part to make up the difference is all. Which reminds me, I meant to ask you, just how many kids do you think you and your husband are going to have in the end? Oh, well, for now, we're just thinking of having one kid. I don't think we'd want any more than that. And of course, there's my physical health to be worried about as well. Wait, what? Are you serious? You're really only thinking of having one kid? But that's crazy talk. Is it really that bad? I mean, did you even know that you were going to want five kids before you had them all? Oh, well, I suppose when you put it that way then now, I didn't really expect this. I always thought that I would only be having a couple of kids. But then all of a sudden I got pregnant a third time and before you knew it, I had five kids. So then after the second kid, the ones after that just sort of came along? Basically, yes. It wasn't that I didn't want to have them, but by the time I got pregnant, I figured, what the heck? Why not go through with it? Wow, that is just... I really don't know if I could do something like that, you know? Really? Is it that big of a deal? Just what is it about having a kid that makes you so nervous? You know that you can ask me anything you want about the process. I've gone through it quite a bit at this point. I guess I'm just kind of worried about what I'll do when I go back to work and don't see my kid until I come home. And about how much money I should be putting away for them for their future. And then, of course, there are all kinds of insurance things to worry about. I guess really when it all boils down to it, most of what I'm worried about is money. How do you do it with five kids, if you don't mind my asking? I mean, no offense, but I can't imagine that it's cheap to raise so many little people, right? Yeah, it isn't cheap, for sure. That's why I don't really bother with any of those funds or savings or putting away things for the future. Oh, really? You mean you haven't really thought ahead for any of your children at all? 
I just think that parenting should be an unplanned and spontaneous kind of thing that gets decided right then and there. I don't really see the point in worrying about something that might not even end up happening in the future, you know? Well, I guess that makes some sense. But what happens if there is some kind of emergency where you need funds right away? You really can never know what's going to happen, especially with that many children, right? Nah, it really is all fine. I mean, kids go out and play, and they get hurt, and then they get better. I just let them raise themselves, basically. I see. Well, what about college? Do you ever think of that? Or what if one of your kids needs special tutoring or has some expensive camp or activity that they want to try doing? Meh, I think kids find ways to entertain themselves, you know? You don't need to get them anything too fancy. And as for college, I really don't see what you need that for. I mean, the state says you're an adult at 18, so I think my children should be able to take care of themselves by then. They'll be old enough. You really think that your children are going to be ready to live on their own right when they turn 18? Yeah, of course. I mean, they would have basically been raised taking care of themselves, so it'll be an easy transition, really. I guess I'm really just a kind of go-with-the-flow person who really doesn't try to get upset when it comes to raising my kids. Does that make any sense? So you really don't get mad at your kids for anything? Don't you think there are some things that are maybe worth getting upset at your children for? I mean, how do you teach them that they've done something wrong if they can't see that you're upset? I don't really think it's my job as their parent to do all that stuff. I think our main job is just to have the kids, and after that, they're on their own. I mean, why else do I pay taxes for schools if not so they can raise my children for me, right? Besides, I don't really see any laws saying that it's my job to do anything more than feed and clothe them, really. Sure, but I mean... Okay, well, do your kids study well in school? Hmm, I would have to say no, given some of the report cards that I've seen. And I never ever see them doing any homework either. <laughs> so then, don't their teachers at school get mad at them for not doing their work? No, I don't really think their teachers get mad at them for anything. I mean, who even cares about homework, really? You know what I mean? Did you know that in other countries, they don't even have homework? Everyone knows that it's just busy work to keep children preoccupied anyways. So I just let my kids play and enjoy their life instead. So then, if one of your kids did come to you and say that they wanted to go to college, what would you tell them? I would tell them that they are free to make that choice if that's what they want. And then I would tell them to get a job and start saving up for it, because it isn't going to be cheap. Hmm, <laughs> I see. I guess I just always thought it was parents' jobs to try and give their children as many opportunities as possible. So rather than just letting them run around doing whatever they want, you can help guide them towards a future they would want. Hold on a second, just what are you trying to say here? Are you trying to imply that I don't care about what happens to my kids? No, of course not. But it just seems to me that maybe there's not a lot of planning when it comes to them. I mean, you said yourself that you don't save any money for them. And just who do you think you are to be telling me how I should be raising my kids, huh? I mean, you haven't even had any kids. I don't remember ever asking advice from you anyways. Where do you get off trying to critique how I raise my family? I'm really sorry, Donna. I didn't mean to upset you or anything like that. I guess I'm just realizing that we have very different outlooks on life. But you've given me a lot to think about, and I really do appreciate that. So thank you for talking to me about all of this. Hey, Donna, are you there? I just wanted to let you know that your kids are all at my house. Do you have any idea what this is about? I don't really remember you saying anything about them coming over. What are you talking about? Of course I told you that they were going to go over and stay with you for a bit. I'm giving you a little taste of parenthood before you have to deal with the real thing. I'm sorry, what? I feel like I'm not quite following along. Are you really serious about that? Well, you were the one who came to me, so worried about being a parent, remember? So I just thought that I'd give you a little taste is all. I see, but uh, having to take care of all five of your children isn't going to make me any less worried about having my own. Besides, taking care of five kids all of a sudden is way too much for me. Can you please just come and get them? 
Oh, please, what are we talking about? This is going to be a walk in the park for you. After all, you were confident enough about everything to not even come to me for advice first, right? But the last time that you and I talked about parenting, you just got really mad at me. Well, that's because you were completely ignoring the advice I was giving you. So since you're that confident, why don't you prove to everyone that you're as good a parent as you say? I never really said I was a good parent or a bad parent. I'm really sorry if that's what you got from our talk. All I was saying was that I think our views are maybe a little too different from our parents' styles to really have much overlap. But you don't even have a parenting style yet. Besides, you were acting like you know what was best for my children. So why don't you go on and take care of them and prove that to me then? And if you do a good job, then I won't ever try and tell you how to raise a child ever again. I'm sorry, but I really don't think I need to go through any of this just to please you. Are you forgetting who you are in this family? I'll remind you that I'm married to your husband's older brother. That puts me in charge of you, and you have no right to tell me no when I ask you to do these things. Now you are going to watch my children, and that is that. It's only going to be for a few days anyway. Hold on a second. You're going to leave all five of your kids here for a few days? Well, yes, they're all on summer break, and I told you that I don't sign them up for camps. But I have to go and put them somewhere. So I thought this would be the perfect plan. No, you can't do this. I mean, my husband just left for a business trip, and I'm at home all by myself. Oh, yes. I know all about that. That's why I chose today to send them over. But there won't be a moment of peace and quiet around here the whole time that they are here. I told you that I need to keep myself calm so that I don't overexhaust myself while pregnant. Oh, please. You just want everyone to treat you with kid gloves just because you're pregnant. Well, I am telling you that I've done it five times and I never asked anything of anyone. You should be thankful that I'm giving you this chance before you have a child of your own. Please, Donna, I seriously just won't be able to do this. They are making a huge mess of the house already. Some of your kids are throwing our belongings all over the place. Shouldn't they know better than to do this to someone else's house? Well, you know that kids will be kids, right? I mean, they're just having a little fun is all. This just goes to show that you need more experience raising them so you can start to learn with my kids. Oh, Sasha, I just wanted to check on you since it's been a few days. How are things going for you? Shall I come over and pick them up? You weren't even at home this whole time, were you? I tried calling you a bunch of times, but you weren't picking up. Well, I figured since I finally had the house to myself that I would take a little vacation with some friends. I had a lovely time. It was just the break I needed from being such a busy mom. So you left your children at someone else's house so that you could take a trip with your friends? Well, I hope you had fun. Well, when you're a hard-working mom like me, sometimes you just need a break. I'm sure you'll find out about all that eventually. But anyways, I'm just glad that we're both able to give each other an important experience like this. I hope you enjoyed taking care of my children while I was away. <laughs> no, actually, I'm afraid I had to give up on that rather early. It was just doing a number on my body and I couldn't handle all the craziness going on in my house. Wait a second. So you're telling me that you didn't watch my kids? That's exactly what I'm telling you right now, yes. But, wait, what? What do you mean? What are you talking about? Where are my kids then? What did you do with them, huh? Well, I took your kids to go stay with their grandma Linda, of course. I told you that I just couldn't handle them here. You sent all of my kids to go be with our mother-in-law? Why would you do that? Because I called her and told her what was going on and that I couldn't handle dealing with all your kids. Then Linda said that she would take care of them for me. You've got to be kidding me. So you're telling me that for the past few days all of my kids have been with Linda and not you? That's right. I just knew that I had to send them away since I was pregnant. But I've heard that they were also acting up terribly in front of Linda as well. They even broke several glass things, tore up the carpets, and even destroyed some art in her house. Did my kids really do all of that? I had no idea at all. Well, I think even Linda tried to be patient with them at first, but ended up having to call in her husband for help. 
You did know that Frank used to be a drill sergeant in the military, right? Anyways, I guess the two of them got angry with your children and tried to set them right. Oh no, this is really bad. This wasn't supposed to happen. I have to go and pick up my children right now. Yeah, I suppose Linda and Frank are probably wondering whose fault it is that their grandchildren are like that. You three will probably have plenty to talk about when you get there. But why would they think that it's all my fault? Were you talking poorly about me to them or something? Oh, I didn't have to do anything of the sort. I think that they figured out just whose fault it is all on their own. After all, why else would all your kids be running around as if they had never even heard of the word manners? But you didn't care about that either way. You just wanted to take your trip. Which I was also sure to tell Linda about. How could you do this to me? I just wanted to give you a chance at raising some kids. I was trying to be friendly. Is that really what you call being friends? Because it certainly didn't seem that way to me. And I have to say that I didn't learn anything from that experience either. You just dropped off your kids without warning and expected me to be your free babysitter. Well, I heard from Linda that she told you to never talk to her again. I was also talking to my husband, and he said that we should probably keep our distance as well. But then, that's the whole family. They're all against me now. I can't believe this is happening to me. Yeah, it sounds like Linda and Frank were really furious with you. I mean, did you even apologize to them? Of course I apologized to them. The moment they opened the door when I arrived to get my kids, I said I was sorry. But you should have seen the way Linda was looking at me. Her eyes were so cold, and you could tell she was blaming everything on me. I even heard that Linda called your husband and told him all about what had happened. It's true, and no, he's not going to be coming back from his business trip this weekend. But he said that he's going to go and stay with his parents for a while. So I guess if you want to see him, you'll have to deal with all three of them lecturing you, huh? Although I hope you understand how you did this to yourself. Your husband went away on that trip hoping that he could count on you to take care of your family and you just let the kids do whatever you want. Shut up! You don't know what it's like to deal with five kids! You don't know what I've been through! Well, whatever it was that you have been through, I hope you at least managed to release some stress while you were on your vacation. Oh, just stop it already, will you? Did you know that I might get divorced because of you? I even hear that I might lose custody of my children! Well, who knows? Maybe that might be the best. I mean, someone has to teach those children to behave. Not only that, but those kids need someone who is going to think about their future and make sure they have opportunities when they grow up. But I gave my children all the opportunities they can have to do whatever they want. How is that any different from what someone else would do? You know, I thought I respected you because of how many kids you had. I thought that surely you were having them responsibly and making sure to take care of them all but now I understand that you have got to be one of the worst mothers I have ever seen. I mean, you hardly even do any parenting at all. But at least it sounds like we won't have to be dealing with you for very much longer. Whatever happens, though, I just hope that your children get the chances at a good life that you might have taken from them. No, this isn't fair. I thought that we were friends. We're sister-in-laws. You can't just do this to me. You can't just leave me like this, please. I don't have anyone else on my side. I need you right now. Can't you see that? After that, Donna settled down a bit, and her texts were much less gloaty than before. Although it didn't change how Linda and Frank about her one bit. After her husband returned from his business trip that had kept them apart, he went to go and stay with his parents to find out about what happened. Donna went over there one day to talk to all three of them, and they decided there that a divorce was in order. Donna tried to protest but she knew that she wasn't really going to get anywhere. After that, Donna's husband was granted custody of the children and they all lived with Linda and Frank. I hear that all three of them are being very active in making sure that the children straighten up and fly right. As for Donna, after the divorce, she had to sell her house and move into a much smaller apartment where she lives all by herself. I can't imagine the grief she must be feeling as a mother, but I wouldn't want my children raised by someone like her. So, it's hard for me to truly empathize. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this. Joy, good evening. Your kid is four years old now, so they should be getting ready for preschool to start here pretty soon. Good evening, Ellie. That's right, and the entrance party for it will be happening next week, actually. 
Honestly, I never thought the time would come for my little baby to have to grow up and start getting ready for something like school. And to think me, of all people, would get to experience having a child of my own and watching them grow. Well, we are all in our mid-forties now, right? Back when all of us heard about how you had just gotten pregnant with your first child at the age of 40, we were all shocked. But it's great that after five years have gone by, everything's turned out all right with your kid, and there were no problems at all for either of you. Well, thank you for mentioning that. I've still got plenty of years left where I'll have to be raising a child in the house, but I know that my husband and I were always dreaming of this, so no matter how old we get, we'll make sure to put all our energy into them. Oh, that's right. I found out that my niece's kid will be going to the same preschool as your daughter. Oh, is that right? Her name was Jessica, right? She's your twin sister's daughter. Yes. And this year, she just turned 20, right? Yes, that's right. So, well, she had her baby at the age of 17, I think, and ever since then, I really haven't seen either her or my niece any. And I haven't even heard anything about her boyfriend. A few people in the neighborhood I live in still seem to talk with her every so often, so I get all my updates about her from them. I see. Both of her parents ended up getting divorced, but you knew that already. However, they are both married again now, so things in her life have always been all over the place. I don't think Jessica has really even had a place to truly call home, and that's why for a while before she had her baby, she was always coming over to see me. But I'm thinking that after I started to worry a little bit about her being pregnant, she started to think of me as her annoying old aunt. <laughs> and that's where our relationship really dropped off. I think she's even gone and blocked my number. But at least you have people in the neighborhood who are still in touch with her. That's true. I really am fortunate to have all of them around. And once preschool gets going for my daughter, I'm sure I'll run into Jessica some, so I can tell you how she's doing. Thank you, Joy. Anyway, my bath is about ready for me, so I'm going to put my phone down now. Sounds good. I'll talk with you another time. Hey, hey. I heard that you're 45 years old. Pardon me? I'm just 20 years old. <laughs> That's very young to you, right? Um, who is this I'm speaking to? Just a little bit ago, you were talking with one of my cute mom friends, and the both of you exchanged phone numbers, right? Well, I went to my friend after that and got your number from her. Um, okay. So are you seriously 45 years old? Yes, I am. Did you come with your kid's kid today because they weren't able to bring them to the party or something? No, actually, that kid happens to be my daughter. What? So that must mean... At the age of 41, you gave birth to her? <laughs> Giving birth to a baby at 41 years old? <laughs> that would mean you gave birth while you were the same age my mom is now. The fact that a little girl has to grow up having an old hag as her actual mother is so sad. <laughs> Poor thing. Ugh, considering you are way too old to understand what any of us younger moms are talking about, you are not allowed to become friends with any of us. Excuse me, but you are going on and on a little bit too much for my taste. How about you tell me your name first, before getting so caught up in what you have to talk about? Huh? Let's not talk about me becoming friends with you or not right now. First, I want to know about who I'm talking with and what exactly you're talking about regarding me being an old hag. If that's how you're going to talk about me, then I probably wouldn't even want to be friends with you all anyway. So, can we start by having you tell me your name and laying off that horribly rude attitude? Wow, such an annoying old hag. I might be annoying, but the fact that you're not giving me your name is pretty uncool of you. What? My name is Jessica. 
What? Jessica. Yes, and do you have a problem with that? For some reason, you're acting exactly like my old and stupid aunt, and that's really starting to grind my gears now. I'll make you pay for acting up like that around me. <laughs> that's what you freaking get. I came up right behind you without a single person noticing and kicked you square in the ass. I bet that freaking destroyed your lower back. <laughs> And watching you fall down after losing your footing was so wild. Oh my god. <laughs> the fact that your little daughter came running to you screaming and crying, Mama, was the cherry on top that I needed. <laughs> oh, how hilarious things have become. <laughs> oh, and another thing. I'm not very keen on you becoming a part of my friend group, but you are more than welcome to become my punching bag. <laughs> Actually, that sounds like a great plan, all right? From here on out, I'm going to have myself an old hag as my stress reliever. <laughs> Anytime I see you, I'll be coming your way with a punch or kick, so be ready for that. <laughs> see you later, Grandma. <laughs> Joy! Oh, hi, Ellie. I heard that you really hurt your lower back. Are you going to be all right? I'll be fine. I just pulled it a little is all, so there shouldn't be any lasting issues. I wanted to make sure things weren't broken there, though, so I went into the urgent care just to have it looked at. They had me transferred to the hospital because, over time, it became more and more stiff, and I couldn't really walk anymore, so I'll be here for a few days. But don't worry, because by then I should be as good as new. Well, I'm happy to hear that things weren't all too bad for you. But having to be admitted to the hospital... Well, because of what Jessica did to you? Oh, I am so very sorry for her behavior. You don't have to apologize for anything. You weren't there, so what could you have done to change this outcome? I know, but... She is my niece, and that means I take partial responsibility for her actions. Honestly, from what I'd heard about her these past few years, she hasn't been all that crazy. There have been a few times here and there where she's had outbursts, but for the most part, she's been working hard at being a young mom. But I should have never taken what everyone around me was saying about her for granted. So before things get any worse with her behavior, I'm going to do what I should as her aunt and put the fear of God into her. Um, I understand you wanting to really punish her for what she's done, but it seems that my husband is going to handle things regarding what happened, so maybe take a second to calm down first. All right? I'll be fine. I don't want you or your husband to get involved in any more of this. You make sure to focus on having your back heal up and tell your husband to take care of your daughter. Please, I'll stop by tomorrow afternoon to see you as well for a little bit. All right, I'll let my husband know. And thank you. Uh, just don't get too carried away with her, okay? I'll try not to. Also, when the time comes that I need to talk with Jessica at all, c can I please borrow your phone to do so? What? Uh, I guess you can if you'd like to use it. Excuse me? <laughs> what should I say? The person that came to get your daughter today was a man. Was that your husband? If that's the case, then that man is way too good looking for such an old and wrinkled granny like yourself. I know that women are pretty much useless after turning 40, but when it comes to men in their 40s, they are just getting started. I might have to take him from you now. Just what I expected from you, Jessica. Huh? This is the end of the road for you. What? Who is this? Saying things like that to a person who doesn't even know you is a bit too aggressive, don't you think? I'm sorry for butting in on all the fun you were having there. I am your aunt that you've been avoiding for the past couple of years. Your Aunt Ellie? What? Huh? Aunt Ellie? What's going on here? Did you know that I've been best friends with the beholder of this phone number ever since high school? 
her name happens to be Joy, and she is, in fact, a Joy. What? I knew that you both were around the same age, but you're best friends? So are you kidding me right now? Right now, Joy is sitting right next to me watching all of this unfold on her phone. She was the one that allowed me to borrow her phone from her in order to have a word with you. Because you've had my phone number blocked for how long now? Four years? Um, okay. Aunt Ellie, I went and unblocked your phone number. Now what? Alright, thank you. I would like you to stop acting all vague right now, though. What was all of this about? Because I'm telling you right now that I don't want anything else to do with you or Joy now. Well, unfortunately, there's still plenty of things you and I have to talk about. So don't think you can get out of things that easily. Huh? Joy ended up having to go to the hospital. She had to go to the hospital? And she's been admitted into it. What? Because of you kicking her from behind, you went and hurt her lower back pretty badly. Luckily, she'll only be in the hospital for a few days as she has her pain managed and some therapy done to help the muscles. But it's going to cost her some money being there for a few days, and that will most likely not be cheap for her. So you are going to have to pay her a settlement for both those medical bills and for her time. Huh? I have to pay her? Well, of course. It's your fault she had to go to the hospital for this. You should be able to put together the pieces of this simple puzzle easily, Jessica. I don't have the money to pay for all of that, though. This isn't going to be something you can just get away with doing, do you understand? But I don't have any money. Well, I'm sure you don't. So don't be surprised that from here on out, you will most likely be left for the streets. Huh? What are you going on about? Considering you only bothered to care about Joy's husband's looks today, you probably have no idea who he really is and what he does. All I know is that he's really good looking for being in his 40s and most likely has money. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Then how about we catch you up to speed on what's going to be happening? What are you talking about, Aunt Ellie? <laughs> Jessica, right now you're a single mother, right? Huh? How? The reason you were divorced was because you cheated on your husband. He ended up forcing you to pay him a settlement for what you'd done to him, and now you're paying that off little by little. You were then able to find yourself a small job within a small company and are now working as an office lady there. Right? Yes, but... And the CEO of that company you were just hired by not too long ago, he happens to be the exact same man you were just calling hot. Joy's husband. Huh? Now you're all up to speed, right? Not only did you have no clue what the owner of the company you worked for looked like, but you also went and sent his wife to the hospital. No way. This is a very small world, isn't it? How could something like this actually happen? Well, it's actually happened, so you should know the answer now. Right now, the CEO is here with me. He's with you right now? So far, we've all agreed not to get the police involved because of the fact that you still have a very young child with you and because you are still having to pay off another settlement. But within the company, you have been up to a lot of bad things such as threatening other employees who don't do as you tell them, and also slacking off and leaving work early to go enjoy yourself. For the past year, I haven't heard anything really good about you from those that work with you and from those that know you as a friend. Um... And now you've gone and assaulted the wife of your CEO while at a preschool with a bunch of kids around. None of that you've been up to is acceptable, and you will be punished for it. Um, tomorrow you will be spoken to in person about all that's to come. But just be aware that you have not been with that company for very long, and so the HR team has every reason to get rid of you for whatever reason they need to. 
so you will be getting one month before your fate is decided. What? No! You're lying to me right now, right? Uh, why? I can't be let go from the company this early. I already had to drop out of high school after becoming pregnant, and then I had a baby and had to deal with the divorce. Finding a job was so tough for me, and so when I finally got one, I was really thinking that things would work out for me. Things were really starting to feel good to me. Then shouldn't you have started to take things more seriously, like the way you worked and the way you dealt with other adults? The fact that your reason for sending your CEO's wife to the hospital was because you didn't like how old she was and the way she talked. That kind of a reason isn't going to slide in this world. And saying things like, I don't know, will not help your case at all. Of course, even had she not been your CEO's wife, things would still end up the same way for you. Um... Now, considering that you don't seem to have any idea how to behave like an adult, and are expected to be the caretaker of your own child, we've all decided you need to be put under watch. So the whole family has decided that you will come to live with me now. What? Luckily, at my house, you will have people like your fairly strict uncle and your very strict aunt, as well as both of your cousins who are now becoming adults themselves to deal with. No! We are going to make sure that you get your act together and that you are held very responsible for everything you've done thus far. No way! After all of that, a few days passed before I got my settlement from Jessica that paid for all my medical expenses and the time she took away from me. She was fired from the company she was at sooner than expected by my husband, as he couldn't forgive what she had done to me. But luckily, she had a very well put together aunt watching over her, so she was able to help find her a new job pretty quickly. And with how things are back in her aunt's home, she really has no freedom there. And if anything, her baby is getting more freedom than her. After about half a year had gone by, I went over there to see Ellie and everyone. And that's when I got to meet with Jessica again. I was a bit nervous at first, but I was shocked to see she had started growing into an adult. As the first thing she said to me was sorry before asking me how I've been doing. It seems that for the past six months, things like having to work all the time and not having any time at home to mess around, Jessica was forced to pull herself together. And so we can all now say that she's settled down a lot and is less abrasive to be around. I'm hoping that the next time I see her, she's even more calm and we can talk a little about what happened back when she kicked me down. A lot of things had happened with her at such a young age, so I really don't want to hold too much of that against her if I don't have to. And since both our kids are the same age, I think that as long as things go smoothly in the future, we can become close and friendly mothers with one another. Thank you for watching and listening. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave a comment about what you thought of the story. We look forward to seeing you at the next story.